People want to know, how do you feel about Bryce Young having won the Heisman Trophy? Was it the right decision? I do believe that, that the voters got it right. Um, I think that Bryce Young, he played big uh, when he had to. And that's what you want. You want to have a guy who you vote for that starts to separate himself from the pack. Devontae Smith, touchdown Alabama! Intercepted by Charles Woodson! Dallas off the Heisman! They will not catch Lamar Jackson! 35-40, he's on his way! Desmond Howard is going all the way! That is a Heisman Trophy winner! Welcome back to the show. Now we're about to talk about some potential prospects for the Heisman Award in the 2022 season. Um, J. Rowe, we got we got you know Bryce Young returning, um, C.J. Stroud. Well, we got two of the top four finalists returning for the 2022 season. I mean, let's talk about Bryce Young. Now the target's going to be really big on his back. Now you know he didn't have to deal with that in the 2021 season. Obviously coming out against Miami. No one really knew what to expect from this young quarterback, but obviously he delivered in a big way, but now the target's on his back. Um, there's film out there on him. And then you always kind of worry about the guy uh, putting too much pressure on himself, especially after, you know, if, if either a player has a, a monster season or he does something like Bryce and he wins a significant award. And now he feels a little bit more pressure to go out there and perform at a certain level. Um, you know, you kind of concern yourself with that, with, with players. I'm not really that concerned about Bryce in that particular instance because I think he's a guy who mentally, he he's just in a good space. He stays in a good space mentally where I don't think he's going to press too much and feel, feel, feel as though he needs to go out there and impress people with his performance. So I, I think that, you know, he'll be good. His, his dad, Craig, is a, a mental health coach. So he got like, uh, he got in-house help, so to speak, <laughs> to get him through, to get him through that type of um, ordeal, that situation. Yeah. Well, to begin with, it's now his to lose. Yeah, um, he true. starts as the favorite. He was actually the betting favorite, you know, most of the year. We've talked about that a bunch. Uh, That's crazy. But he, he starts as the favorite and unless somebody's going to have to take it away from him and he's going to have to, you know, play at the level that he did this year, obviously. But, you know, there's another dynamic. He's on the same team with Will Anderson. And now, so that could work one of two different ways. Uh, voters may look at this and say, well, Bryce Young already had his moment in the sun. Let's give some love to, you know, his teammate, you know, who was perhaps responsible for a good deal of what Alabama was able to accomplish last year, maybe this should be his moment to shine. Or it could be, as we've discussed in the last segment, it could be, you know, just some more vote splitting. What do you think? Well, I can see that. And the, the, the beauty about it all is that they will have a big spotlight on them. I mean, Alabama as a team, but uh, those Always two do. players... Uh, exactly, exactly. And those two players specifically because of the season that they had in 2021. So they will get a lot of attention. Let's talk about look at Ohio State's quarterback, C.J. Stroud. Now, C.J. Stroud is another one, um, the quarterback of um, the Buckeyes. A lot of eyes will be on him because there are always a lot of eyes on the Buckeyes. Um, losing, what, two receivers, he'll, he'll probably lose Chris Olave. He'll probably lose um, Garrett Wilson. Uh, but they got Njigba Smith coming back. And they got one of the guys who I was really high on throughout the 2021 season, Trevion Henderson, the running back. He's coming back. And I think that Trevion is a guy to keep an eye on, too. Even though Stroud's going to get a lot of attention, you know, he's a finalist. But Trevion Henderson, I still think, is one of the best running backs in the country. So they may have um, another situation where they're splitting votes, too, especially if um, Trevion gets out the gate fast. Yeah. Speaking of running backs, Blake Corum from Michigan, um, he was yeah. out a little bit of the year, didn't have an opportunity uh, to play and shine as much as he might have liked to put right. himself in that discussion, but he'll be back next year. Yeah, he'll be back. And check this out, J-Roll. Don't forget, it was like thunder and lightning. So it was Hassan Haskins. And it was Blake Forum. Like, they split time. They shared carries. So, Hassan Haskins is going to move on. And it will probably be Blake's show from the running back standpoint. But they do got a freshman that they 
really, really like uh, Donovan Edwards. And I know they're going to try to work him into the rotation too, but you would think that right out the gate that Blake Corum will get a lot of carries and they're going to use him as the workhorse as far as um, the running back position is concerned. So yeah, you, he, he's going to get, I think, some early looks too because he's, he's a guy who's exciting. He's dynamic with the ball in his hands. You know, he, he's a home run hitter. He, is that, he has that breakaway speed. So early on, uh, I think there'll be a, there'll be a lot of eyes on on Blake Corum too. Only five foot eight. You have to wonder about uh, the durability issue with somebody that size. Although he is two hundred pounds, so we'll see what uh, happens with Blake Corum. How about another guy? How about Sam Hartman, the quarterback at Wake Forest? Boy, I'll tell you what, he put up some big numbers this year, and Wake had a great year. He's coming back. Yeah, you're right about that. And they had a they had a tremendous year. I mean, they played an ACC championship game. Um, you know, the system that he's in. It's um, conducive to putting up some eye-popping numbers, and he did not disappoint. You know, the biggest issue for Wake was their defense, a very porous defense. And I think when you're the program like Wake, you know, you're going to have to um, stay in the public's eye. And the only way you're going to do that is not by your statistics, but by winning games. And the thing that made Wake um, interesting and intriguing is that they were winning those games it was like okay damn wake won another game and then you start to pay more attention to sam hartman so like if they drop a couple of games early then i, I just believe that people stop paying attention to sam hartman and wake so as important as the, the stats are they're going to have to continue to win games so people can um, keep keep eyes on wake i tell you this year just in terms of pure eye candy Yes. The guy I keep thinking about is Caleb Williams. Every time that guy got the ball, you know, well, maybe not every time, but certainly so many of the yeah, times man. that guy got the ball, starting when he came in for Spencer Rattler in the game against Texas, man, I'll tell you what, it was just thrilling. And that's the type of stuff that really could influence people when thinking about the Heisman Trophy. He's coming back next year, but it's going to be a whole different situation for him. It really is because obviously he's in Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley left. Lincoln Riley is now at USC. Um, so he's going to have a, a whole new coaching staff, a new system to learn. But what what I liked about Caleb Williams is the one thing that the one word that I think describes him best is energy. Like he just brought an incredible energy, not only to the offense, but to the whole team. And I remember speaking with uh, Kirk Herbstreet. Uh, one day and he said man when I was calling the game I, I believe it was the Texas game OU Texas game and he said I'm watching the sideline and I'm looking at Caleb and Caleb is like over there in the defensive huddle talking to the guys on the sideline about you know let's go out there let's go boom 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 hitting guys on the hammer like getting defensive guys jacked up getting those guys ready to, to go out there on the field and handle their business and so when you see a guy like that and he brings that sort of energy man it's just it's 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 impressive especially because he was a freshman but you knew he had great leadership skills but he's going to have his challenge because new offense new uh new terminology new system uh, I, I was surprised that he didn't follow uh, Lincoln Riley to USC, but hey, this thing is not over. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I tell you what, when I think about Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler and the University yeah. of Oklahoma this year, you just can't help thinking about this, what I've been calling portal pandemonium. Since December <laughs> 1st, we're told that, what is it, 280 players have entered the transfer portal. Uh, you know, and I think what... To my way of thinking, what it's really going to do, among other things, aside from giving kids more opportunity, is it's going to create another layer of interest, potentially, in college football. And, and here's where I'm going with this. So this year, Jake Cohn played for Notre Dame against Wisconsin, the school that he formerly played with. Now, I got news for you, whether it's Adrian Martinez or Keaton Slovis or whomever it is that's going from here to there— we're eventually going to end up with some games like this. And you see it in professional sports all the time. When a player gets traded from one team to another, or he signs as a free agent with another team that plays against the team that he formerly played on, right. it just creates another layer of interest. And I think we're going to see some more of this going forward in college football. Well, you hit it on the head because it, it creates another layer of interest. It gives us some more storylines to talk about. It makes the game even more intriguing. 
and that's good for everybody. Like I don't see a, a downside to that whatsoever. Um, it, it makes it fun. You know, the guy he's playing against former teammates. You know, they know him. He knows he knows them. So. Uh, I like that fact. I think that it's interesting. It's intriguing. It gives us other storylines to talk about. And it gives, um, you know, other people, other viewers, like people who aren't really, um, I guess, associated with either school or either program. But because of that storyline, they may tune in and check out that game because they're so intrigued about this player who used to be at this school, but now he's playing against that school and they, you know, they know each other so well and all that type of stuff. So I think this is fun. You know, um, Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss uh, head coach came out and said that he is kind of like a knock on the portal. You know, I think a lot of these coaches aren't big fans of the portal for various reasons, but he made a comment that of course they're not. <laughs> he made a comment that, um, that oh he said that these players are starting to go pretty much to the program where they can make the most money which i just thought was a very odd thing for him to say when you start to i mean you look at his history yeah. and then you, you look <laughs> i'm just saying brother People you know what living I mean? glass houses there you go exactly then you look at what's transpired you know within the last month or so with some of these other coaches who have jumped ship and gone to um to programs where they've um, gotten, you know, bigger paychecks. But, you know, I think that, you know, you get look at a guy like uh, Mel Tucker, uh, Michigan State's head coach. He ain't said nothing about the transfer portal, transfer portal because it has worked to his benefit. So yeah, you do have, have those Walker coaches. Third. 100%. Exactly. So you do have those coaches who are like, you know, using it to their benefit and they think that it's a very useful tool. Well, I, I think that college football – for since the beginning has been yeah. one way and it's been in favor of the institutions and right. you know true. the rights Very true. of exactly. the players yep. have not really I don't want to say have not been considered but I, I don't know that you could say that they have been paramount um, right. and now of course right. coaches aren't well coaches are going to like it because they're going to get an opportunity to get a great player and come in yep. and you know uh, yeah. perhaps impact their program. But on the other side of it, you know, I don't necessarily think that kids are going to go the place they can make the most money. I think they're going to go the place where they can play. You know, I yeah, think that's yeah. what this is about. Right. Well, I, I, and I think it's probably a little bit of both, you know, because people are starting to look at those NIL deals and then, but at the end of the day, I, do, I think you, you're right. They also do want to play because, it, you know, what every player wants to do is have the opportunity to get on the field so they can get to the next level. And you know you're not going to get to the next level if you're on the bench or you're not getting any, any PT. So you're right about that. Like Ultimately, you would think that these young men want to go somewhere where they can play and where they can shine because they want to play in the NFL. So I do agree with you there, but I believe that the, the point that some of these coaches are trying to make is not only that that these coaches are trying to recruit them based on the NIL, but you know not not only Mel Tucker who found the the Doak Walker Award uh, winner and um, Kenneth Kenneth Walker the third, but hell shoot Nick Saban Nick Saban <laughs> Jamison Williams who was a game breaker who was in the transfer portal came out of Ohio State transferred out of Ohio State so. Like I said, you got a lot of coaches who are doing a really good job using this transfer portal to their benefit. Yeah, well, I don't think uh, I don't think Bryce Young is going anywhere. And by the way, I cannot no, believe that Bryce Young becomes the first Alabama quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy. You think about all the great quarterbacks that have come through that program. You know, Joe Namath yep. and Bart Starr <laughs> and Kenny Stabler and all those players yeah, who've had all that success. Bryce Young becomes the first.